Do you have to be a religious person in order to be welcomed into Jesus' kingdom? Do you have to have your whole life like totally pulled together? Do you even have to be like just a good person in order for Jesus to welcome you into his kingdom? In this teaching, I introduce the Sermon on the Mount with what's traditionally called the Beatitudes, and we answer the question, who's welcome in Jesus' kingdom? As this sermon begins, you have to note the setting or the context, I think, in order to really appreciate and feel the force of how this sermon begins and what Jesus is really doing in the beginning of the sermon. Um, Jesus says this, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1, the sermon begins this way, And when he, Jesus, saw the multitudes, he saw all the crowds that were gathering around him, and this is pretty common. As Jesus' ministry is beginning, crowds are beginning to flock to him. And these crowds are full of all sorts of different kinds of people, people who would be considered faithful Jews, people who would be looked down on by faithful Jews. There would be the religious leaders. These crowds are full of all different kinds of people. Um, a lot of them would be people who were nothing like Jesus. In fact, the way Andy Stanley likes to say it is, people who were nothing like Jesus liked Jesus, that he attracted people who were nothing like him. And for whatever reason, they they wanted to hear him and they came to him. And so Jesus, at the beginning of his ministry, sees all these crowds gathering around him. And here in Matthew chapter 5, it says uh, that when he saw those crowds, he went up on the hillside, the mountain, sat down. His disciples kind of came around close to him. And he's going to begin to teach his disciples and teach these crowds. And this is how the sermon begins. It begins like this. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men cast insults at you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely on account of me. Rejoice and be glad, Jesus says, for your reward in heaven is great. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. That's the introduction to the Sermon on the Mount. Traditionally, these blessings are referred to as the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes. Um, and really, uh, there's a lot of different approaches that you can maybe read about in commentaries. Um, probably the most common approach to these blessings, these Beatitudes, is to say, man, these Beatitudes almost pronounce like certain virtues that we as followers of Jesus ought to possess, that we should be poor in spirit, or we should be gentle, or we should hunger and thirst for righteousness. And I think there's a certain amount of truth to that, but I'm not fully convinced for a variety of reasons. I'm not so sure that's what Jesus is doing in these Beatitudes, is he's, he's pronouncing uh, virtues or declaring virtues that we ought to pursue pursue in our own spiritual life. I think more what Jesus is doing is he's describing states of being for people who come to him, that people come to him in, from a variety of places and a variety of states of life. And regardless of the state of life that you come to him in, you can experience his blessing. Um, I think that's pretty clear, at least as you walk down through it. Some of these things aren't things to pursue, like um, Blessed are those who have been persecuted. That's not something to pursue. That's just a state of life. That's a state of being. Or even, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Um, in the view that says these are virtues we should pursue, they take that mourning as mourning over our sin. Maybe, but Jesus doesn't say that. He just says, blessed are those who mourn. And mourning is a state of life. It's uh, sorrow. And so... <clears throat> I think what Jesus is doing is he is actually describing the states of life uh, that people come to him in. When you think about the setting there in, in the first couple verses, 
Jesus has all these crowds, and as he looks around the crowds, there are people there who, who maybe are sorrowful. Life has been hard. They're mourning. There are people there who would be described as spiritually bankrupt, spiritually poor. There are people there who are meek, and life hasn't been easy for them, and people have taken advantage of them. There are people there who want to see justice and righteousness come. There are people there who are just naturally compassionate and merciful. There are people there who are pure in heart. They do love God, and they are pursuing Him. Um, there's all these different kinds of people. That's what I think Jesus is, is saying in the Beatitudes and these blessings. And and what he's saying is, regardless of where you come from, you can experience the blessing of my kingdom. You, you are welcomed in. And so when you read the Beatitudes that way as blessings on people in all states of life, what you, you need to hear in that is that Jesus basically is saying he's throwing the door open wide on God's kingdom. And he's saying there, there is... Uh, an open door policy in my kingdom. And it doesn't matter where you come from. Do you come from a religious background where you're pure in heart and you love God? Then you're welcome here. Do you come from a, a, a non-religious background where you're spiritually impoverished and you don't even know God and you don't know the Bible and you're not even sure how to act in church? Well, there's a blessing for you. You're welcome here and the kingdom of heaven belongs to you. And everything in between, that God has an open door policy on his kingdom in Christ. And so when when we come to Jesus and we we listen to him and then we enter into his kingdom, he, he's throwing that door wide. We can enter into that. And when we do that, what happens is blessing replaces the curse. Think about that. Like whatever curse you've experienced in this broken messed up world, whatever it is, the curse of pain, loss, heartache, suffering, maybe the curse of shame and abuse and neglect, who knows, whatever curse you've experienced in this world, maybe just the curse of disappointment because the world isn't the way you wish it was yet, right? whatever curse you've experienced can be replaced with blessing in Jesus' kingdom, and Jesus' kingdom is open to anybody and everybody, and so... Wherever you're at, whatever you've experienced in life, wherever you've come from, Jesus throws open the door wide on his kingdom and says, come, come, come on in and experience the blessing of my kingdom.